Hey guys, Dexter here from uh, Dexter's Workshop. Uh, lately I've been playing quite a lot with uh, SBCs, that's single board computers, and especially with uh, Raspberry Pi. Because uh, I do have some projects that involve uh, a lot of external hardware. And uh, I really needed a way uh, to read external expanders like PCF8774 uh, without uh, pulling the I2C uh, bus all the time uh, because I, I don't want to put a lot of overhead uh, on the I2C bus and also um, I don't want to put a lot of overhead uh, on uh, the Raspberry Pi processor. Uh, so basically what I wanted to do is having some kind of interrupt or some kind of uh, pseudo interrupt routine that would basically allow me to read the uh, port expander that it's here. We have a, a PCF8574 uh, so I wanted to have a port expander that is going to be read only when the state of the input pins will change. I try. Usually, you do that with interrupts. It's quite easy easy to do that using a microcontroller. But uh, using a, an SBC, uh, it's a little bit harder to to do this uh, kind of application because you basically don't have access to interrupts. Uh, all interrupts are handled by kernel, so basically if you want to have uh, access to, to, to the kernel interrupts and to the way that kernel is handling interrupts, uh, you would have to write your own kernel module that would be uh, plan A and plan B it's write your own uh, operating system which is off the table of course so uh, I've sold this uh, using a GPIO from the Raspberry Pi that was basically configured as input and uh, I have the code here and I'm going to try to explain it line, line by line basically first line and the second line, <clears throat> unimportant, I'm uh, catching uh, control C uh, keyboard uh, so I can stop the program whatever, whenever I want. Uh, here I'm using a library that I found it on the internet, it's not my, it's not my own, it's called PCF8574 uh, uh, and also I'm using the Raspberry Pi GPIO library that is also available. Uh, I'm declaring an I2C bus that uh, it's on SMB bus 1 and uh, the address uh, of the PCF8574 with all the address pins grounded it's 0 x20 in hex. Uh, the next line I'm declaring um, the GPIO to be set in BCM mode and also I'm setting up the pin 4 to be an input pin because it's what we need. Um, another thing that I'm going to do here is set all the pins or if you like the the input output port of the I2C expander I'm setting it to high so I can basically detect the transition from high to low without using uh, a pull up resistor in case I wanted to detect a transition from low to high so you just connect up to eight switches to the input ports of the PCF 
from the PCF pin 1 to ground from PCS, uh, PCF pin 2 to ground and etc. Basically you connect the input pin through a switch to ground. Uh, another thing here, I'm defining a small function that will be triggered when the GPIO pin uh, on the Raspberry Pi will be activated and I'm going to explain later how it's getting activated. Then we are adding an event detect on pin 4 on the falling edge uh, that will basically activate the print function here it's a callback function and the debounce time of around a hundred millisecond this is good to have because your switches will bounce and when your switches will bounce you will have a very fast transitions between high and low and your interrupt pin from the PCF will get triggered many times. The interrupt is set at 4 microseconds but your mechanical switches will bounce more than that so your input port will, uh, or pin will get triggered many times after the interrupt pin will get triggered once so you basically you need that and that uh, particular value is variable the bigger the pin the bigger the bounce time so you can you can play with that another thing I'm doing here uh, is just defining a handler for uh, uh, my SIG uh, in it uh, uh, to be to be uh, catch on. So basically, what I'm doing, I'm doing a cleanup when the control C is pressed. I'm doing a cleanup and then printing exiting process and then exit uh, from the main loop. Uh, here I'm assigning a SIG int handler and I'm I'm connecting it to the SIG uh, SIG int uh, signal and. Basically here I'm doing nothing, just uh, a simple uh, while loop that will keep the program running. What you would have to understand is the fact that on the on the data sheet of the PCF8574 you do have an open drain interrupt output. And that particular open drain interrupt output will get triggered every time the state of the pin slash port will change and that particular interrupt will get reset only after you write or read from that particular point. Uh, from that particular port, excuse me. Uh, here you will see that being an open drain you will need a pull-up resistor because the interrupt is active low it's as you can see here is declared as active low so you will need a pull-up resistor to keep the interrupt high and the interrupt will go low as soon as any of the pins are going to change state. Long story short is working as predicted here so I found a solution not to pull every time or uh, get a, a pulling interval on the on the I2C bus but I'm pulling the I2C bus only if an interrupt is detected and that you can see here I'm running my program as you can see the connected uh, the connected button was pulling down the pin 
the the pin that is connected to and that particular pin would read false and also the next button will be triggered as you can see the next button is false uh, there is a little bit of a catch here because you can't actually stop the the interrupt from from being triggered as soon as the state will change and the state will change twice first the state will change from high to low and that would be read once here but also when you're going to release the button the chain the state will change from low to high which is also detected by the interrupt and will be triggered uh, uh, another time <clears throat> so you you basically if you're if you're you were using a microcontroller you could detect only the first triggered interrupt and then disable interrupts do your stuff enable interrupts again here you will get triggered twice because the 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 switch will actually change status twice in a single operation first will go from high to low and then will go from low to high well this is not a problem because you can actually uh, find a way to uh, to disable this this the the second output or to disable uh, the the routine that is taking care uh, of the um, even detection on the GPIO. Uh, you can use a global flag, you can use uh, uh, a thread that uh, will actually uh, take care of this and you actually know the fact that the routine will get called twice so basically you can you can ignore the second one through various methods. An advantage of this way of doing things as I said, is the fact that you will not pull the I2C uh, bus many times a second and that will actually enable you to have an even driven uh, concept behind it because uh, if your input signal on the port expander here is fast enough and you're not pulling uh, and your pulling interval it's uh, bigger than the change uh, in the in the pin state you will lose actually information so what you need you need a way to call your uh, your processing routine when the pin state changed and hopefully uh, and also nice to be is to know which pin <laughs> changed basically this is what i've tried to achieve and it's working quite nice uh, i hope uh, it will help you in your uh, projects and you will find this video interesting uh, thank you for watching this this is dexter's from dexter from dexter's workshop uh, have a nice weekend and uh, bye bye